back to the channel. I'm Yukta Tajdeva and I'll be joining Infineon Technologies as an applications engineer this year. The project which we have bought for you today is the hexadecimal keypad scanner using Verilog. Let's get started. The agenda is as follows. We'll be understanding the design requirement first, followed by the key detection mechanism. Then we'll understand the algorithmic state machine chart, which is similar to a state diagram. And then we'll understand the Verilog modules and the simulation. The first and foremost step in any design flow is understanding the design requirement. So let's do that first. The keypad scanner and encoder is supposed to identify whether a valid key out of the given 16 inputs has been pressed. Then it has to identify that which of the given 16 inputs is pressed and generate a unique code corresponding to the pressed key. It also has to take into account the asynchronous nature of the inputs and if a key is pressed and held down, it must not be interpreted as pressed repeatedly. This is the structure that will help us to achieve the design requirement. As we can see, each row line is connected to ground with the help of a pull down resistor. When a switch is closed, a connection is established between the corresponding row and column line and the row line attains the value held by the column line at the moment. As an example, if the column 1 line is deserted by the machine and the key 1 is pressed, then the row 0 line will also achieve the value 1. So the row vector becomes 0001 and the column vector becomes 0010. The machine encodes these row and column values according to this table. And soon we will see how this is implemented. Let us proceed to understand the key detection mechanism. First comes the state 0 of the machine in which all the column lines have been deserted. The machine stays in this state as long as no key is pressed. As soon as a key is pressed, the OR of the row lines becomes 1, indicating that the key has been pressed. Now the task of the machine is to identify which key has been pressed. To identify which key has been pressed, the column lines are deserted one by one. First the column 0 line is deserted. Then the row vector is set. If the row vector is 0, it means that no key from this column has been pressed. Similarly, when the column 1 line is asserted, the row vector is 0, so the machine proceeds to check the next column. Similarly, at column 2 also the row vector is 0, so the machine proceeds to check the next column. When the column 3 is asserted, the row 2 line also becomes high due to the closed switch action of the button B. This further asserts the valid signal for one clock cycle. This means that the encoded output is now present at the code lines. We can see that the output 1011 corresponds to the pressed button B. If the button B remains pressed, all the column lines are asserted and the valid line and the code lines are deserted, indicating that a valid output is not present at the code lines. This also addresses that part of the design requirement which said that if a button is pressed and held down, it must not be interpreted as pressed repeatedly. This can be called the state 5 of the machine and this state is exited only when the button is deasserted, which again sends the machine into state 0. Now let me summarize what we just studied. Initially, the machine is in the state 0 waiting for a key to be pressed. As soon as a key press is detected, the machine exits state 0 and starts asserting column lines one by one. In state 1, it asserts the column line 0, and if the pressed key is not in that column, then it checks in the next column. Similarly, if the pressed key is not in any of the columns, then the machine enters the reset state. But if the pressed key is found, then the valid signal is made high. The state 5 is then encountered in which all the column lines are asserted. The machine stays in this state as long as the key is pressed. As soon as the key is deasserted, the machine enters the reset state again. Let us understand how the Verilog modules have been divided. Since we are working in a Verilog environment and not on a physical board, we cannot give the inputs manually. Therefore, the signal generator for keys will simulate the key press for us. Then there is the row signal module which will highlight the row line corresponding to a pressed key. Then there is the hex keypad code generator which will be responsible for generating the encoded outputs. In between the row signal module and the hex keypad code generator module, there is a synchronizer module. 
Its function is to convert the asynchronous row inputs to synchronous inputs. Let us first understand the row signal module. Since its function is to highlight the row lines corresponding to a pressed key, we have to identify the cases when a particular row line will be asserted. For example, the row 0 line will be high when the button 0 is pressed as well as column 0 is high, when the button 1 is pressed and the column 1 line is high, when the button 2 is pressed and the column 2 line is high, and the button 3 is pressed and the column 3 line is high. Similarly, the row 3 line will be high when the button C is pressed and the column 0 line is high, and so on. Let us look at the very log code for the same. We can see that the inputs to this module is the 16-bit key vector, the 4-bit column vector, and the output is the 4-bit row vector. These four lines of code will be executed only when the key or column signals change their value. They cover all the cases when a particular row line will be high. For example, the row, the row 1 line will be asserted when the key 4 is pressed along with the column 0 line high, the key 5 is pressed along with the column 1 line high, or the key 6 is pressed along with the column 2 line high, or the key 7 is pressed along with the column 3 line high. Similarly, we can understand for all the other row lines. These four row lines are fed as inputs to the synchronizer which we will see next. This is the synchronizer module. It consists of two D flip-flops. Here the input will be the OR operation performed on the row lines as we will see in the very log code. Here the input to the synchronizer module is the row lines as I said, the clock and the reset and the output will be the synchronized row outputs. The two D flip-flops are negative edge triggered and have an active high asynchronous reset. So when the reset is high, both the A row and S row are set to zero and when the reset is low, the A row is the output of the first D flip-flop and the input of the first D flip-flop is the OR operation of the four row lines and the S row is the output of the second D flip-flop. Let us understand the very log code of our main code generator module. Its inputs are the row lines, the S row, S row was the output of the synchronizer module, clock, reset, and its outputs are the encoded output, the valid signal, and the 4-bit column vector. These are the state assignments for the six states which were there in the ASM chart. If we would have used binary encoding, then we could have used only three bits. But since we have used one hot encoding, we required six bits to define six states. The valid signal will be high when either the state of the machine is S1, S2, S3 or S4 and when the row signal is high, that is it should not be zero. The case statement executes only when the row or column signals change their value. Here the, all these cases summarize the truth table of the encoder which we saw earlier. By default, the code value will be 0, that is when none of the inputs is valid. Now we start the description of a state machine. The outputs change their value only at positive clock edges or when the reset is asserted. When reset is high, then the present state becomes S0. Otherwise, normal uh, flow of states will follow. This is the next state logic. Next state will is determined based on previous state and inputs. These are the default values for next state and column vector. Now we define the next state and column vector using case statement. When we are in the S0 state, that is the initial state, all the column lines were asserted. Therefore, the column vector had the value 1111. Now, if the S0 signal is asserted, then the next state will be S1. Otherwise, it will stay in state S0. When we are in state S1, only the column 0 line was asserted. That is why the column vector holds the value 0001. Now, the next state will be S5 if the row vector is high. Otherwise, the next state will be S2. In state S2, the column vector holds the value 2. So that is 0010, which means that, that the column 1 line will be high. So if the row vector is high, then next state will be S5, otherwise the next state will be S3. While in state S3, 
the column vector holds the value 4 that is 0 1 double 0 which meant that the column 2 line will be high. If the row vector is high then next state will be S5 otherwise the next state will be S4. While in state S4 the column vector had the value 8 that is 1 triple 0 which meant that the column 3 line was high. While we were in state 5 all the column lines were asserted hence column vector held the value 1 1 1 1. The next state will be S0 that is the initial state only if the row, row signal becomes low. Otherwise it will stay in state S5 again. Let us understand the very low code of the test bench. Basically why are those values which are modified by the very log modules written by us and regs are those which we will modify in the initial blocks in the test bench itself. So this key variable is that variable it is a 16 bit vector which will determine which key has been pressed. For example if the MSP of the key vector is high then it means that F button has been pressed and if the LSP of the key vector is high then it means that 0 button has been pressed. The following variables which are of 40 bits contain the ASCII codes of the strings. For example, the key 0 variable consists of ASCII code of A, E, Y, underscore and 0. Each ASCII code is of 8 bits and that is why we needed 40 bits to reserve the ASCII codes of 5 characters. The following case statements will execute only when the key vector changes its value. The high bit of the key vector determines which key has been pressed. So if we say that the second LSP of the key variable is high, then pressed variable is set equal to the key 1 variable which was defined equal to the string KEY underscore 1. So all the cases have been covered in which different bits of the key vector are high. There are 17 cases. The 17th case is the one in which no bit is high. In that case, no key is pressed. And by default, we have assigned pressed variable to none. That is, no key pressed. Here we have called all the other modules which we studied earlier. This statement dictates that after 2000 seconds, the simulation should finish. Here we have defined the clock starting from 0 and it will toggle after every 5 seconds. Initially we set the reset to 1 and after 10 seconds the reset was set to 0. The internal for loop sets the value of bits of key vector one by one. For example, first it will turn the LSP of the key vector high for 60 seconds, then it will reset it, then the second LSP will be turned high for 60 seconds, then again it will be reset and so on till the MSP. This entire process is repeated two times because of the external for loop. Let us understand the simulation results. First what I did was select all the signals and convert their radix to unsigned decimal. So for signals like pressed and all the key signals what I did was select the radix as ASCII. As we know J is the controlling variable. It determines at which index the key vector should be turned high. So when j takes its values from 0, 1, 2 till 15, we know that the key vector will become high at LSB1, LSB2, LSB3 and so on, taking the decimal values of 1, 2, 4, 8 and so on. The delay between them is of 20 seconds as we had put in the test bench. So when the first LSB of the key vector is high, we can see that the pressed variable has the string value key 0 which is correct according to our code. Corresponding to the value of the key vector, our pressed variable is taking correct values. For value of 2, the pressed key is 1. For decimal value 4, the pressed key is 2. For 8, it is 3. For decimal value 16, the pressed key is key 4 and so on and so forth till the key F. Another observation which we must make is that this is the point where the OR of the row bits becomes 1 but this change is transmitted to A row only after one clock cycle. 
and again this change is transmitted to S2 after another, another clock cycle. This is because of the synchronizer. For the state variable, decimal value 1 corresponds to state 0, decimal value 2 corresponds to state 1, decimal 32 corresponds to state 5. So when we were in state 0 and S row high was detected, we transferred to state 1 as the next positive edge. And the valid signal became high because we were in state 1 and the row signal was high. The valid signal was asserted for only one clock cycle. And then we entered the fifth state. We exited the state 5 when the row value became 0 after the next positive edge. Also, another thing which we must note is that corresponding to state 1, sorry, corresponding to state 0, all the column lines are asserted and corresponding to state 1, only one column line is asserted. So basically, all our signals are in perfect coordination. Thank you for watching the video friends. We hope that you learned a lot from it. Do consider liking and sharing all the videos on the channel and subscribe if you haven't till now. Also, let us know in the comment section, what videos do you want from us in the future? Thank you.